Hello and welcome to this course Machinery Fault Diagnosis and Signal Processing. Today's topic is Tool Condition Monitoring. So, why tool condition monitoring is required? Basically, uh, if you see in the industry, uh, then uh, the machining tool is being changed on the basis of uh, the operator's experience. Okay, or sometimes uh, industry may follow the practice of changing the tool in every shift uh, irrespective of whether the condition of tool is good or bad. So, even if uh, the, to, uh, the condition of the tool is good after one shift, uh, then it is get changed and even if the condition of tool is not in the mid of the shift, the tool is not changed. So, there is a requirement of uh, tool condition monitoring which will indicate, which will give the exact uh, condition of the tool uh, so that the operator uh, can take the decision of changing the tool at optimized time. So, that is why tool condition monitoring is uh, very much required. If the tool condition is blunt or not sharp, then it may be damaged the workpiece deteriorate product quality, production quality depends on tool condition, uh, tool wear is generally considered up to uh, 600 uh, microns, uh, after 600 microns uh, uh, the time has come to change the tool. So, there is uh, one system uh, which will indicate uh, the exact tool wear and uh, uh, the quality of the product the surface finish of the product, surface roughness of the product uh, can be optimized, can be improved. So, in a plant uh, with a continuous machining operations, how do you know that the time has come for the tool to change? So, generally tool replacements depend upon op operator's experience. A fresh tool is used for two shifts and then it is replaced with without evaluation of its condition. So, every industry have made uh, their own thumb rules for uh, changing the tools, uh, but uh, these uh, thumb rules or these uh, operators experience sometimes uh, may not be uh, that effective and it hampers uh, uh, the, the surface finish or the quality of the product. So, in such condition tool may be good uh, or tool may be bad, sometimes uh, there are some remaining useful life in the tool, uh, but uh, since uh, uh, the shift has changed, uh, we unnecessarily change the tool. Uh, so, how to determine a tool wear? Okay, so, that is a question. Uh, if the tool worn out, then the cutting forces would increase. So, there are some indicators uh, uh, by which we can get the condition of the tool, uh, such as the, the cutting force are, uh, cutting forces are increased because there is increased in the, in the friction between the cutting tool and the workpiece. Uh, so, cutting forces are one of the important parameter by which we can indicate the condition of the tool. Then uh, how to monitor cutting forces? Uh, there are increase in vibrations, uh, there are increase in noise, increase in the acoustic emission, increase in the motor current, increase in the surface roughness. So, these are some of the parameters uh, which you can monitor to exact to, to know exact the con exact condition of the tool. So, tool monitoring system can be developed, uh, comprehensive tool monitoring system can be developed by measuring all these parameters simultaneously. Okay. So, uh, the comprehensive tool monitoring system does not depend on any one pi parameter, uh, such as it is not depend upon only vibration, it is not depend upon only uh, the caustic emission, it is not depend upon only the motor current, it is not depending upon uh, the cutting forces, but uh, a comprehensive uh, tool condition monitoring uh, is an integration of all these cutting parameters and uh, by analyzing uh, the signals coming from these various signal, uh, sensors, 
uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, give the status of the tool so how tool condition monitoring helps so cnc machine controller would give the appropriate command uh, example machining of uh, rocket nose okay so we can integrate all these sensors uh, with the uh, computer numerical control machines and uh, we can get uh, the uh, the condition of the tool uh, on the cnc machines so this is uh, a general layout of a uh, comprehensive tool condition monitoring system here uh, there are two motors one for uh, the spindle and another one for the tool post uh, here uh, current sensors are installed for motor current signature analysis uh, then uh, this is the tool post uh, and uh, on this tool post accelerometers and uh, acoustic emission sensors are installed uh, then uh, this uh, micro optical system uh, it uh, monitors the tool wear optically then the surface roughness uh, continuously monitor uh, the surface finish of the tool at the same time uh, tool post dynamometers uh, are installed for checking uh, the increase or decrease in cutting forces so uh, this is the general layout of a comprehensive tool condition monitoring system uh, wherein uh, we can integrate uh, all these uh, uh, indicators uh, to know the exact condition of the tool now uh, the tool condition monitoring techniques uh, includes cutting force measurement so the machining process is uh, done uh, with the penetration of the tool with the tool po with the uh, with the work piece and uh, with the penetration uh, of the tool post the strain energy get released and this uh, strain energy uh, release process is involved with lot of cutting forces uh, as the tool gets blunt the cutting forces uh, tends to increase and by my measuring uh, those cutting forces we can uh, we can monitor the condition of the tool uh, and to mo to measure uh, these uh, cutting forces uh, the tool post dynamometers can be used then the next technique is acoustic emission the machining process is uh, is generating a uh, lot of uh, acoustic signals uh, and uh, when the tool gets blunt or when the tool is new uh, the emission acoustic emission is uh, quite a bit smooth and when the tool gets blunt uh, there are changes in the acoustic emission and by analyzing those changes we can uh, find out the condition of the tool so some high end microphones can be used uh, for acoustic emission analysis then uh, these cutting forces uh, generates a lot of vibrations in the tool post and uh, by mounting the vibration analyzer uh, or accelerometer on the tool post uh, you can have uh, the vibration signals uh, and by analyzing those vibration signals uh you can find out the condition of the tool uh higher the cutting forces higher will be the vibrations and uh, uh this is how vibration analysis help us in analyzing the condition of the tool then motor signature analysis is also very very important because uh, the increase in cutting forces would also put a lot of load uh, on the on the motor the spindle motor and tool post motor and by analyzing the current drawn by these motors we can have the condition of the tool at the same time uh, when the when these cutting forces uh, get increased uh, then the temperature of uh, the tool 
uh, also get increased and uh, by monitoring uh, the tool tip temperature, uh, we can find out uh, the condition of the tool. Then next is surface roughness, again uh, when the tool is new then the surface roughness uh, would be of high quality and when the tool gets blunt then uh, it directly affects the surface roughness. So, by measuring the surface roughness of uh, the workpiece, you can uh, con monitor the condition of the tool. So, these are some of the, the parameters or, or some of the sensors which you can use for tool condition monitoring. Then what are the signal processing techniques that you can use? Uh, this, all these signals which are generated through acoustic signals, vibration signals, motor current signatures uh, or you can say cutting force uh, uh, signals, all these signals can be analyzed by using various signal processing techniques. Uh, time domain analysis uh, is a very, very basic signal processing techniques in which uh, you can uh, uh, you can measure the various uh, time domain statistical parameters such as uh, kurtosis, RMS, skewness, crest factor, etc. And by monitoring the mo time domain statistical parameters, you can uh, you can monitor the condition of the tool. Uh, at the same time, various time domain models such as auto regressive models uh, can be used. Then the next is frequency domain analysis. Uh, the advantage of frequency domain analysis over time domain analysis is that uh, uh, it gives the information about the frequency uh, and uh, we can filter out the unwanted contaminated frequencies from the frequency of interest uh, and uh, the, the conclusion can be more uh, robust. Uh, Fast Fourier transform is used to convert the signal from time domain to frequency domain. Generally, uh, fast Fourier transform is used uh, for stationary signals, uh, whereas if the, station, uh, the signals are not stationary, then uh, we need to analyze the signal in time frequency domain. Uh, so, time frequency domain not only gives uh, the information of the signal in time uh, as well as in frequency domain simultaneously and it will help us uh, to know the condition of the tool in better manner. Uh, generally wavelet transforms are used for time frequency domain analysis. Uh, there are three types of uh, wavelet transform which you can use. One is a continuous wavelet, discrete wavelet or uh, stationary wavelet. Then another time frequency domain analysis uh, uh, technique is Hilbert and Hilbert Huang transform. Uh, so many of the researchers have used uh, Hilbert and Hilbert Huang transform technique for uh, determining the tool condition. Uh, then there are some other signal processing techniques are also there, uh, but uh, out of the other signal processing techniques, uh, these four types of signal processing techniques are more popular. So, so that is it uh, for tool condition monitoring uh, and uh, this is a very, very important and necess necessary to topic uh, from the industry point of view and uh, by proper uh, tool condition monitoring we can, uh, we can reduce uh, the rejection of the part and we can utilize the tool in optimum way. Okay? So, thank you very much.